I know so many people who use protein shakes. Almost everyone seems to have a bag of protein powder in their cupboard, and I suspect you might too, or are at least considering it. Most people relate protein shakes to muscle, in that they say you need protein shakes to build or grow muscle, or to take protein shakes to keep hold of the muscle that you already have. And that is kind of true, but that's way too superficial. And the truth is so much more interesting than that. In this episode, we're going to go through whether you really need protein shakes to build muscle, or whether you can do just fine without protein shakes and instead focus on eating natural whole foods that don't come blended with some alluring design on that makes you think it's going to be an absolute game changer. Hey, and welcome to Vegetarian Health and Longevity, a podcast by Hurry the Food Up, where I cover topics that help vegetarians live longer in better health. I'm your host, James LeBague. I'm a registered sport and exercise nutritionist and advanced clinical practitioner in family medicine. It's my pleasure to interview expert guests, share my own experiences from working with patients and clients, and demystify some of the nutrition fluff that's out there to give you practical, take-home information that you can use to live a healthier life. All right, I should acknowledge that not every protein shake smells like candy floss and has heavily muscled people on the packaging, but that's what a lot of people associate with them. Now, you may know a bit about protein already. It's one of the three main macronutrients, the other two being fat and carbohydrate, and it's a vital part of your diet. Protein contains amino acids, and you may have heard these called the building blocks of life before, and that's for good reason. Amino acids are required for so many different roles in your body, including your hormonal system, your immune system, and your reproductive system. Consuming protein gives your body the nutrients to help these carry out their normal functions. Protein is also the nutrient that, yes, is responsible for helping you to grow bigger, stronger, and more resistant muscle tissue. So it's protein that helps drive the adaptations that will enable you to build new muscle to make positive gains from your gym training sessions, your power yoga, or your high-intensity training. There's a process in your body called muscle protein synthesis, or MPS, and this is the term used to describe the creation of new muscle tissue. The way you create positive adaptations to training is this. You exercise and create stress on your body. Your body recognizes this, so it wants to get bigger or stronger. It needs protein to be able to do so, you consume protein. That protein you've just eaten triggers MPS, so you grow new muscle tissue. So the bottom line here is that you need protein in your diet to make positive improvements in exercise, which includes going to the gym with an aim to grow muscle. That means that protein shakes make sense because they give you that super blast of easy to digest protein. But in order to properly answer the question of whether protein shakes are required to build muscle, it's worth first talking about what the gold standard ranges are for protein intake and how much protein you consume in your daily diet. The optimal amount of protein to eat per day to build muscle is between 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, or roughly 0.75 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. For a 70 kilo or 154 pound person, this would be about 115 to 154 grams of protein per day. Now, what I've frequently seen when I've analysed diaries of vegetarian clients is that they miss this threshold, often quite considerably. They might be consuming more like one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And if you're not in that range, then as it might be obvious, your ability to build muscle is not going to be as good as if you were in that range. This is backed up by evidence, by the way. It's not just a number that I've plucked from thin air. A study called Recent Perspectives Regarding the Role of Dietary Protein for the Promotion of Muscle Hypertrophy with Resistance Exercise Training investigated this, and this was the threshold that they discovered on analysis of lots of different data sets. So this is the region that people should be trying to get into if they're trying to build muscle, because you are going to get the best anabolic response from your food, with anabolic response essentially meaning positive muscle benefits. But there's a clear question here and is one that we frequently get at Hurry the Food Up. What happens if you don't hit this threshold? Because while the science says it's best to hit that range, this might not always be possible. The truth is that you can still build muscle if you aren't in that protein range, and don't let anyone kid you otherwise. You might not be able to build it quite as optimally as if you were in the range, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. 
So then back to the question of, are protein shakes needed to build muscle? The answer is one of those slightly frustrating, it depends, because there is nuance here. It depends on how much exercise you're doing and how much protein you're consuming without protein shakes. In order to build muscle, you have to do resistance training or strength training. And I usually suggest a minimum of three times per week. If you aren't doing this, then a protein shake isn't going to make much difference. You can think of it as the exercise is the trigger to build muscle. The protein shake is the vehicle. Without the trigger, it's not going to happen anyway, so the vehicle doesn't matter. But then it's about whether you actually need a protein shake. Because if you're already in that gold standard protein range per day without having a protein shake, then including one isn't going to be much benefit. As I mentioned before, you can still build muscle without being in that gold standard range. But what if you're really low on protein intake and you want to be in that gold standard range? What can you do? Well, the first thing is to look at your diet and see whether you can get some easy wins in terms of bumping up your protein intake through regular whole food, so not through a protein shake. One of the easiest ways here is to opt for low-fat dairy as opposed to full-fat dairy. You can think of low-fat dairy as the vegetarian equivalent to lean meat, where you're getting more protein per gram. So swapping to low-fat Greek yogurt or low-fat cottage cheese is a simple way of getting more protein then you can make use of other veggie foods that are high in protein, such as eggs, soy and its derivatives like tofu, lentils, beans and whole grain carbohydrates. And I love these last three because people are often surprised by how much protein is in them and just how powerful they can be for bumping up your protein intake. But let's say you're trying to increase your protein intake and are finding it difficult. Maybe you don't like dairy, or you're trying to lose weight or are in a calorie deficit and are finding it tough to get that protein up without accompanying carbs or fats. This is one of the scenarios where a protein shake might come in really handy. They're a low calorie, easy option for getting lots of protein in and are especially helpful when trying to lose weight because you're naturally restricted with how many calories you can eat per day. This is actually something we're super conscious about at Hurry the Food Up and super open about too. Our main goal of the Vegetarian Protein Fix is helping vegetarians lose weight healthily. We create meal plans to help with this, but getting that protein intake up while being restricted on calories is tough. So we include protein shakes in many of our meal plans simply because it helps to achieve those optimum levels that are otherwise impossible without a diet that consists primarily of egg and low-fat dairy because that's not particularly satisfying, sustainable, or supported by evidence. So then we try to balance getting into that optimum range against not eating a super boring diet that makes you want to quit. Instead, we focus on healthy, satisfying food that makes you happy and lets you lose weight at the same time. And if you're interested in trying out one of our plans, head to hurrythefoodup.com forward slash try, that's T-R-Y, and you can download one for free. It comes with a shopping list, step-by-step -step instructions for all recipes, and is full of speedy, tasty, but weight loss friendly recipes. So visit hurrythefoodup.com forward slash try to get started now. So as well as a protein shake being reasonable if you're in a calorie deficit and struggling with your protein intake, there are a couple of other scenarios where I think they could be helpful but still not necessary. As we get older, it seems like we need more protein to build and maintain muscle. So I think it's quite reasonable to consider protein supplements to help with this as we age. In order to trigger that process that I mentioned earlier, muscle protein synthesis, it seems like you need more protein than when you were younger for the same effect, which means gradually increasing your protein intake as you get older. In terms of that 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight range, I'd be looking at the upper end of that range for anyone over about the age of 60, because it's going to give you the best chance of keeping hold of your hard-end muscle. Another scenario is for those who have specific restrictions on what they can eat. So for example, if someone has an allergy, intolerance, or they just generally dislike a food and don't eat it, protein shakes can help fill that gap. Your list of high protein vegetarian foods is limited. And if some of those options are removed, then it's even more difficult. This is especially true for those who follow a vegan diet because it is that much harder to get protein in without eating really repetitively and that's not realistic or healthy for most people. When it comes to exercise, my usual advice is that if you're going to be eating a normal meal with a good protein source within 45 minutes of finishing, then you don't need to have a snack. If it's going to be longer than 45 minutes, then a snack is a good idea to give your body the nutrients to kickstart the recovery process. 
If you know this is going to be difficult, perhaps you're traveling or you know you won't be able to eat for about 90 minutes, then a protein shake could make sense for you. You can get that recovery process going with the protein shake, and that's just going to positively contribute to making beneficial adaptations to exercise. In a nutshell, while protein shakes might help certain individuals in certain scenarios to build muscle, they are by no means a necessity, and you can build muscle without them. So I hope you found this episode interesting and it gave you some helpful information about the truth behind protein shakes. If you did find it useful, then please give the podcast a quick review on whatever platform you're listening on. It helps the podcast to spread to more like-minded people like you, and it'll only take a moment. Thanks so much, and we'll speak soon.